Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back for another virtual science camp in the Particle Physics for Kids series. I'm really excited tonight uh, for our guest speaker, Maria, from the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research Laboratory of Radiation Biology. Uh, that's one of their seven laboratories, and it's uh, the one that studies in detail the effects of radiation on living things. Um, so as you know, when you signed up, uh, the theme of the talk is what happens to the brain in space. Uh, you're here more for uh, listening to her talk, so I'll turn things over in just a second. Uh, if you have any questions throughout, uh, like for most of the lectures, I'm going to recommend that you put them in the chat so we don't interrupt her uh, with whatever and just turning on their microphones. And I'll decide when it seems like a good time to interrupt and uh, relay the questions. Uh, most of those will happen through the talk if you have anything that comes up. And then at the end, we'll have a question period uh, there again. And I'll remind you again, you can at that point either put questions in the chat or mention that you'd like to turn your microphone on to uh, uh, ask questions and we'll go through it in order. So without further ado, thank you again for uh, being here and for presenting this uh, guest talk. Uh, welcome, Maria. Hello, everyone. So uh, my name is Maria, as, um, as you heard before. And I work in uh, the laboratory of radiation biology. And today I will tell you something about uh, deep space and astronauts that they are, you know, flying to deep space. And it's very interesting and we see it in the movies, but uh, what actually happens to the human being in the deep space? That's another question. It's not always like in the movies. So you will see and learn hopefully some details about radiation biology, about astrobiology and um, physics a little bit. So um, if you are ready, we can start. And we are here. Okay, sorry. I will just minimize a little my window. Good. I hope you all see well. Um, so the topic of clear. okay. So the topic of our lecture today is what happens to the brain in the space, um, and. I mentioned already that I'm from the Institute of uh, Joint Institute of Nuclear Research in Dubna, and that is very close to Moscow in Russia. So whenever you will travel to Moscow, uh, maybe you can visit us. Okay. So uh, our institute has been established in 1956 and Actually, the anniversary of 65 years of Joint Institute will be now celebrated on this Friday. So it's already 65 years that the Joint Institute of uh, Nuclear Research has been working very successfully. And now we have seven laboratories uh, and uh, people from 18 countries and six states uh, that our collaborators, and we really are very mixed um, laboratories. Also in our laboratory of radiation biology, we had many people from uh, different countries. Right now, it's the situation uh, more Russian. I am from Slovakia actually originally, but, but we have colleagues mostly from Russia and also um, from some other countries. Uh, so how our laboratory started, it was uh, not long after the Joint Institute was established. It was in 1959 and it started just uh, with first radio, radiobiological experiments. But when the laboratory itself was established, it was in 2000, 2005. And now we have many groups, as you can see, radiobiology, neurochemistry, astrobiology. And so 
every group works on some issue that has to do with radiation biology. I'm from group of radiation physiology and physiology, as you know, deals with processes of the bodies, some pathologies that can happen to a body. And we specialize um, in radiation. So we uh, do research on radiation and how it influences human body and human physiology. And uh, one of our focuses is cosmic research or cosmic radiation research. So this is gonna be also the topic of today's uh, talk. Um, you can see now a few pictures from our lab. Uh, we study various things and uh, what we use as model animals are rodents. So we have mice and we have rats uh, that we work with. And we study mostly um, many pathological things that can happen after radiation. How can radiation damage organs, primarily brain, central nervous system, spinal cord, but also the other, other organs such as liver, for example. We study uh, blood, so do hematology. And also we are trying to apply um, some protective strategies because since the radiation um, influences body quite differently and quite negatively, we are trying uh, many approaches to protect uh, mostly brain, but also the whole body um, before radiation uh, so that um, it's not as damaging. Uh, so what is radiation? Radiation is actually a um, natural thing. It's everywhere uh, in some aspect, of course. Maybe you have never uh, thought about it, but uh, rocks in the nature have some radiation potential in the air and from sun that's on the earth, we can get some radiation. Uh, for example, you, if you get sunburned, on your skin, it's also radiation that's happening. So radiation is in some form everywhere. There is a natural or harmful way of getting radiation. There's electromagnetic radiation, there's medical radiation. You maybe have heard about various um, radiation types. And uh, what is our focus now is the cosmic radiation because we are going a little bit above the earth. So we are going to explore what's in cosmos, what's the radiation up there. Um, um, also uh, medical radiation, you can see that um, it's for example, X-rays that you might be familiar of. And also maybe that um, the other type of radiation that are from some radioactive contamination that can also happen as we, for example, our institute that works with radiation. Anything can happen also during the uh, work uh, things with many people that work in some radi radiation field. And um, so the uh, astronauts, are also under radiation and that is cosmic radiation. Um, and before we start with the cosmic radiation, uh, let me tell you something about the history of radiation because since the natural radiation has been here, that's one thing, but how we discovered it and how we uh, started to work with the radiation so that we can now have medical radiation. Now we can have other type of radiation that we use actually for the benefit, benefits of human being. That's another story. So uh, at first in 1895, as uh, you for sure know, X-rays uh, discovered Rengen, Professor Rengen, and he also received Nobel price for physics for that. And then um, uh, Madame and Monsieur Curie uh, with Henri Becquerel, they also uh, further worked through radiation and they were, uh, they were working with uranium and they discovered that uh, uranium is also pretty radioactive. 
And these discoveries started an era of radiation uh, treatment and therapy. It started to be widely used everywhere as X-rays, as uh, various type of radioactivity has been used. And, but um, back then they didn't really know that it could have also negative effects. And um, after overusing of X-rays and maybe you have heard that they were taking pictures, you know, for, from their hands and from their feet because they were so excited about what it can do and how it can show everything inside. But then they started to develop many health issues. And um, that's the point where they started to, to think and other scientists, of course, started to think uh, if it's connected with the radiation, and it was, of course, because radiation and um, this type of radiation in such quantity could have very negative effects. And also what's um, quite negative then in the history is that radiation has been also misused. And for example, I uh, put here the nuclear bombs that has been made and also used so radiation could be very, very powerful in positive and negative sense. Uh, but radiation is very general uh, term. So let's divide it into something that's more, uh, more focused into what we want to. So there is non-ionizing and ionizing radiation. And we are going to talk more about this ionizing radiation because non-ionizing radiation is lighter, not so damaging. Uh, and what does it mean that it's not ionizing is that it doesn't ionize an atom. And so uh, the process of ionization doesn't happen. And uh, it's, for example, uh, ion um, radiation such as ultraviolet uh, or microwaves, mm, you have that certainly at homes also, radios, TVs, that's all not damaging. Uh, ionizing radiation, on the contrary, is very damaging and um, very dangerous for humans. And uh, this is the type of radiation where the energy is removed and the electron is removed from an atom. There's a process of ionization happening and uh, this radiation is associated with types of uh, X-rays, as I mentioned already, alpha, beta, gamma, various cosmic rays, protons, and so on and so forth. And, and we have a question in the chat, well, a, a comment. Uh, Hussein is saying, I think radiation also in phones and computers uh, how is that related to the radiation you were talking about? This is not that type of radiation. Uh, computers have for sure some sort of radiation, but it's also non-ionizing. And um, it's not that damaging, I would say. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, sitting behind the computer uh, many times they is uh, very healthy, but uh, it's for sure not a cosmical type, not not that damaging type. Perfect, thank you. So we don't need to worry about it. No, but maybe use like, I have a glasses with a protection shield actually. So you can buy, a, if, you, if you have sensitive eyes, you can protect your eyes so that the light is not coming too strong to your eye. Okay. So we are um, continuing with this uh, picture. So you can kind of um, imagine maybe in your head how it, how it all, where it's coming and going. So we have a, one part of the screen is non-ionizing and the other part is ionizing radiation groups. And you can see uh, like what approximately, which devices this produces the non-ionizing and we are moving to the red zone, which is really damaging, ionizing. And you can see here that what could all happen, like the damage of DNA, but we will get to this more um, precisely. Uh, 
is just an overview. So I mentioned Sunbird. We are starting lightly because we are moving to Cosmos. So uh, now we are on Earth um, just to start with what can radiation do? Uh, sunburn on the skin. So sunburn um, is not that horrible, but it's already uh, damaged to your skin cells. Uh, UV radiation stimulates pigment in the skin. And uh, you know that when you are tanning and getting sunburned, you can get uh, darker, the skin gets darker. So that means that the melanin is uh, producing by the skin. But if it's too much, and if it's uh, also lately with um, nature being under um, not so not so good conditions. I mean, the the of course mm, our nature gets damaged uh, year by year more and more, and so uh, sun is more penetrating, and the radiation from the sun to our skin is really more damaging than it used to be. So we see that there are more and more skin cancer patients that are um like developing skin cancer and skin melanoma and uh, this is connected with this radiation from the sun and it really even on the earth it really can be quite harmful so the way to protect for example is to wear sunscreen this is like a sunblock that uh, prevents this damaging um, sun rays to get into our skin and made the um, made the skin cells damaged. Um, but how can we protect a person from more intensive radiation? So we can we can shield our skin with some cream and don't get sunburned. But it's the, just a case of the sunburn. Um, if we have a different type of radiation, it doesn't stop there. Um, radiation could be either natural, as we saw, or created by something. And um, these various radioactive materials, depending on the type, which type of particles they produce, they can penetrate actually through not only human body, but they can penetrate through different materials. We have here like a silhouette of a man, and you can see that alpha particle, for example, goes skin deep. It like uh, goes into skin, but not so deep. But then beta par particles would go almost like inside the body and touch organs. And then X-ray would go like all the way through because it's the strongest from those types. And when we have some other type of material that we don't have now the human being, so we have a sheet of paper. Now alpha particles go into the sheet of paper, but sheet of paper is quite good like block barrier. Um, so the alpha got filtered out. And beta part particles, uh, what's good and useful is aluminum sheet. It stops the beta particle, but gamma ray, it doesn't stop there. It, we need a, some blocks of concrete even more because as you see that you know one layer stops second layer stopped but the third layer or third um uh, ray of gamma it would go through so we would have to have another part of concrete or another part of steel to fully block the gamma ray so here is that interesting question for us the problem what's happening in the space is that we don't have enough shielding to protect a human being because in the deep space there are much more than gamma rays. There are cosmical rays and different type of particles that uh, we cannot really block that way and so well. And of course you can imagine that all of the ships that um, the astronauts are flying in, they cannot be made from concrete because they wouldn't fly. So this is one problem that um, 
astrophysics is working with and that's the main problem of uh, radiobiology why we cannot really fully protect a person um, from the radiation that's happening so we mentioned alpha beta and gamma particles uh, let's uh, get some information on uh, what these particles are. Maybe you are already familiar with that from physics, but alpha particles, as I mentioned, they are, I would say, not so harmful, but still um, they can get to the skin and um, they can accumulate in tissue. So every mm, radiation type, even if it's maybe weaker, um, it can get accumulated when it's too much or too often or too frequent. So, but alpha is like a mildest type. It could cause local damage. Um, beta particles, it's a bit stronger already. We saw that. So it could be shielded also by wood, actually, that I haven't mentioned, and body penetration into some depth. So it could already go into your body, um, beta particles. And um, beta particles you can see as a skin burn, for example. And uh, all of those um, types of radiation and particles, it's not only that it goes somewhere around you or it touches you, but um, as you can see here, I put the word ingested. It could be ingested. So you could also breathe radiation. You could also eat radiation or drink radiation because you might eat something that's irradiated, for example. And so then you can actually get uh, radiation to your body and uh, from inside and from outside. So that's why it's also very harmful. <clears throat> Gamma rays is very um, damaging. There's a very high, high radiation risks. And um, this is extensive shielding really required. As I mentioned, sometimes it's uh, like block of concrete, blocks of steel combined. So it um, filters out everything that's possible. And sometimes even that doesn't help. Um, um, I don't know what interesting could I say to that, but uh, oh yeah, that's that's a similar type of radiation actually acts as X-rays, uh, but they have a different source. And so the X-rays, they are similar to gamma. And um, again, if you get uh, X-rayed for some organ, you know, you are sick, you break your leg, you go to get an X-ray there is radiation that you are getting into your body. And it's maybe not um, so harmful that you will feel it one time. But if you get it, um, for example, 10, 10, 20, more and more time, then as in the history, it was shown that the scientists that were X-raying themselves, they really um, got then uh, serious health problems. Uh, because X-rays is very highly penetrating. It also goes um, similarly like gamma rays almost everywhere. Um, uh, and it's usually machinely produced. Yeah, that's, um, it's not so uh, widely spread naturally that I could tell more. Um, in radiation, uh, why this usually is a question from students why the radiation, this one radiation is more penetrating, this not, what's the difference, how, how is this one uh, more harmful and how is that one not. Uh, the thing is that uh, we have here, for example, the X-rays and uh, uh, ironine. And so the thing is that every type of radiation penetrates differently the cell. With x-rays you can see that the penetration and the spreading is practically all over. With iron it's more linear so it just goes in and out and the effect of radiation on the body is then different. 
it also depends on the other factors that we will talk about later, such as just the personal suspense, susceptibility, sorry, sensitivity of the person. But um, it's also fact, factor of penetration and dose distribution that's happening in some sort of matter. It could be live matter, it could be uh, some material, but the distribution is uh, unique for each type of your radiation. Uh, why is that radiation damaging? Is because it happens in the cell, because it starts in the cell and the ionizing radiation is really, it goes into the cell. So what's happening in the cell, you can see on those pictures. So in the cell, you know that from biology classes, for sure, you have the cell here with many uh, structures and uh, radiation hits the cell. And this is a DNA that's genetic material in the cell and it gets broken. Like really, if you imagine this structure, and um, one strain and the other could get broken, sometimes just one and sometimes also both. Again, you can see that, for example, X-rays -ray, does different type of damage as the heavy ions, okay? You have many, many, many breakage and here you're gonna have only few. So, um, and from the damage, free radical are, are made and uh, free radical attacks then cells and they attack many uh, structures of the cells. And then um, again, this damage happens and it could lead to many cell mutations or even cell death. The uh, free radical production is on the basis of radiolysis of the water. So uh, when the water gets broken, it gets uh, dissolved and the radicals, many types are happening. Okay. Um, they are like a byproduct, sorry. Yeah, uh, it's like a byproduct of this chain reaction that's happening here. And so uh, when the radiation breaks, water that's inside the cell. And we know that we are made basically from water, like human body is made about like 60 to 80%. I, I have uh, heard maybe to 80, some, some researchers says uh, from water. So if our water in cells gets broken and all of these damaging processes start to happen, that's where uh, the problem starts to happen. Um, so just for maybe some, some idea of how much the radiation is really in cosmos or everywhere. So uh, we measure radiation in uh, either grays or sieverts. So gray is an absorbed dose that we call and sievert is an effective dose. So how biologically it really is effective. And so approximately on the earth, it's like 0 0.1 microsievert, okay, that you get, which is like one millisievert a year. That's not so bad. But if you are going higher, so you are flying, for example, long flights from uh, Moscow to New, New York, let's say, you have up to 10 microsieverts per hour. That's um, already bigger, right? And when you are moving to ISS, Mars, deep space, you have 20, 25, 75 in the deep space, microsieverts per hour only. That makes it 300 microsieverts per year, uh, per, sorry, transit days. That's uh, about approximately 180. So uh, the principle that is called and it's made uh, by the international research centers that are in the cosmical research is ALARA principle, which is to maintain astronaut radiation exposure as low as um, reasonably achievable. So they cannot really fly to Mars now because it's really far away and it would literally kill them. Um, effective dose 
again just for really your kind of imagination uh this is for radiography for chest x-ray um 100 microsieverts for six months at the year iss and if an astronaut is on a mission that means up to 2000 microsieverts and now when we look at the number 10,000 that has to like if a, if a human body get 10,000, it already leads to severe damage. You can see that astronauts are under pretty much radiation and in a really high risk of damage. Um, the early effects of radiation uh, are happening just right away after radiation. They're usually not so um, visible or not so harmful. It used, it's uh, local tissue damage mostly. If um, there is a bigger radiation, that could also lead to a radiation syndrome, but that's not uh, usually happening very often. That's happening in a case of nuclear catastrophes, for example. Um, later effects are um, more serious than just tissue damage. Um, they happen after mo months or years after exposure to radiation because as I mentioned, as the DNA breaks and it could lead to some uh, damages of the DNA on mutations, for example. Mutation mean uh, cancer development or start of a cancer process. And if a human cell, if our cells and, and our bodies cannot really deal with the mutation happening and cannot really you know, stop it at the right time, uh, cancer, for example, start to happen, leukemia, many type of uh, CNS damage that central nervous systems, or cataracts in our eyes, or also genetic defense, uh, defects or effects. So mutagenesis, teratogenesis, everything that happens uh, when the DNA start to breaks and produce itself uh, incorrectly can see the risk that just one uh, one thing I put here. So it's, I didn't want to make it too scientific, but um, so this is like curve of leukemia patients and all other, other cancers like in progress or even like 40 years after, you know, radiation or in the process of radiation. So you can see that really the cancer is happening and it's it's in connection with this ionizing radiation that's very, very harmful to us. Uh, the space research and the cosmic research is um, very, very widely studied. And uh, our institute and other also institute as SI, European Space Agency and other NASA, for example, organizations I would rather say, not institute, um, they are cooperating together um in the research of space and we have this nika nucleotron base ion collider facility that's for shorten and this is an accelerated complex that's designed uh, here at the joint institute of nuclear research and the idea is to simulate um, the state that has been um, like the big bang state. So the create or simulate the situation that was back there. And um, it hopefully also helps us to understand more of the cosmos and the processes there to also know what's exactly happening to people uh, if they are flying to deep space. Uh, what we have now, in, yes, I ju Sorry. just wondering, do you mind if I interrupt with a couple of questions that have come through the chat? Sure. Um, so, so one was, a, I think about a, a cosm cosmonaut who has the record for space. It's a Valery Polyakov spent over 600 days in space. Uh, why didn't he die from the radiation? And there's two other kind of related questions. One is, do most astronauts get cancer? And the other, uh, can person mute? I'm not sure I understand the exact wording, but can person mutation of radiation exactly with this DKN? That that might be an acronym in another language for DNA, uh, but about the uh, mutation, like radiation mutating the DNA. 
So first question is about the astronaut that has been over 600 uh, days, right? Um, well, I'm not, I, I don't know uh, her personally, or I don't know really her whole story, but um, as I mentioned, uh, radiation sometimes, and the effects of radiation sometimes doesn't happen right away. So she might be in the space for 600 days, came back, be fine for a couple of years or even up to old age but um for sure she might be having some health problems and um i again i don't know her uh, or her story but um i don't really think that uh she is totally fine or was totally fine without any health issues also in years after because we have to really think long term. So she might have de developed some sort of either cancer or maybe some chronic disease, chronic disease of some sort. Um, or maybe even something like I will talk about later, you, you could have some maybe memory issues, memory problems um, that uh, might not be life threatened, but still your brain is not working the same as before um second question i don't uh what was it again i'm sorry well, if uh, most astronauts get cancer like i guess because most of them are exposed to um, a lot of radiation well i don't know the statistics really so i cannot tell you but you will see later in the uh lecture that i uh, will show you pictures of astronauts brain that really changes the structure after um cosmic uh, trip or after after the um, after the stay in the deep space so uh, I'm not sure if they all have cancers probably not most surely not but uh, I think they could be a pretty great number of people that were in space and get some oncological type of disease and the third question, um, again, please, because I'm DNA I, something. I, I, I think, and if I'm wrong with this, because uh, I'm rel relaying the question, uh, it's about how the mutation of DNA happens from radiation. Well, it's, it starts with the breakage of the DNA. So oh, it breaks the DNA and the DNA, we would go more into genetics, which I don't really want to, but uh, when the DNA breaks, it has to repair, okay? Because the structure has to repair itself. So the DNA and the cell starts, the cell starts to work towards reparation, but since there is a breakage, the reparation is incorrect. So it produces the DNA of some sort but it's not the right type of DNA, it's a mutated DNA. And when we get more and more of those broken DNAs, this is the mutation that's happening actually. I hope it was understandable. It, it was to me and uh, for the participants, if it wasn't, feel free to ask uh, more questions on that. Uh, thank you, Maria. Okay, so we are continuing with the lecture. We are at the accelerators that we use now in our research. Um, so uh, I mentioned that we do research, radiation research on the animals. So that what we do, we use accelerators and with the help of accelerators, which it's, um, to be precise, this is this phosotron that we work in as a medical accelerator. Then we have a medical technological complex of our institute you will see it here so in this complex they are fantastic people that are working with patients that have some cancer disease of the brain and um, either tumors or some different type of uh, brain issues that's oncological and they uh, use the radiation as a medical therapy that i already mentioned so uh, as you can see, here is a patient and they, with the use of radiation, they can get this tumor damaged and so that the patient gets healthy and this uh, oncological uh, 
um, issue could get reversed. So in our complex, we use this radiation to simulate the radiation that's happening in the space because the force of the accelerators are pretty high and we can uh, really do the simulation that's happening in the space. So you can see that, for example, here in the therapy, we have uh, some tumor and we can really um, exactly fit the radiation onto some patient and onto some problem. So also with our researches, we uh, measure and calculate radiation before. And then uh, when we do our experiment, we know exactly where and how we should irradiate. I can see also one simulation here. Um, and in the cosmos, um, I was talking about alpha, beta, gamma, but there are many other types of radiation particles that are present in uh, cosmos. That's and the the term cosmic radiation or galactic cosmic radiation. You might also heard galactic cosmic rays. Um, it's a mixture of many uh, particles and many types of radiation. Uh, for example, solar particles from the sun directly flying. Then galactic cosmic rays, which is again a mixture of proton, uh, protons, atoms, heavy nuclei, many types, star, stardust, exploding star, from exploding stars, and many other secondary radiation that are happening. And if you imagine a um, astronauts that some somewhere flying, you can imagine that all of the influences that are so harmful are really bombarding the body of astronaut. Um, Earth, as you can see, have uh, radiation belts, which is a source of radiation. And um, so, so astronauts are basically flying everywhere, yeah? And so this is why, why it's very important to study exactly first the, like from the physical part, what's the radiation belt, how wide, how strong and so on. And also from our biological part to know um, how to protect really people from all of the effects. Um, we were talking about whole body, but the topic is brain really what's um, gonna be interesting for us now. So if we imagine a Martian, Martin mission, an astronaut would be really attacking the head mostly, but also the whole body, but will be, head will be attacking by solar wind, solar flame, uh, cosmic rays of many types as I already mentioned. And um, so central nervous system gets a lot of hazardous radiation uh, during a stay of astronaut in the deep space. Uh, one question that already was here is why some people, if some people, if many astronauts or everyone gets cancer, well, uh, no, also because the um, individual person has a different um, radio sensitivity, but also not only we are different with our immunology and with our bodies, but also our organs and tissues and cell are, cells are very different. And there is a rule that we call burgundy Tribonde rule, and it says about um, sensibility that's individual for each cell or each tissue. And it's mostly about how reproduc reproductive is the cell. So if the cell has a very short cycle, it reproduces itself very quickly. Uh, it's more prone to damage than a cell that's, um, that has a long cycle. Um, as I mentioned, skin burns. So you know that your skin renews itself very quickly. So skin is really more and more prone to radiation damage than for example, some other organs. You can see it here on the picture. I'm sorry, it's quite small, but 
um, uh, you can see how how uh, the all that's red it's uh, really high sensible. So for example, uh, breasts, lungs, and colon and stomach is very also sensible because um, you know, such stomach cells are quickly um, renewing. Uh, of course, there are some exclusion to this rule as everywhere, but that's like a general rule. So uh, the radiosensitivity really influences many processes of the cells, but also the radiation type, as we already saw uh, and mentioned. So now we are going more into the examples in, into of the sensitivity, so high again, uh, blood cells, okay, blood, intestinal, I already mentioned, reproductive system. And a low, interestingly, is um, mature bone. So when an adult is flying to the deep space, that's why also adults are crying because their bones are already grown and mature and they are more resistant. Uh, brain is medium. However, like brain cells uh, where thought to be low sensitive or no sensitive, but um, brain, are, uh, brain cells are considered to be more, even I would say even higher. Uh, I would even maybe put it somewhere here into high or very high uh, because uh, brain needs more oxygen and needs more energy and brain is very complex so maybe a cell itself could be like thought to be resistant but if you look at the brain as a complex organ with a uh, high metabolism with high energy uh, with really high need of oxygen that makes it really sensitive to radiation Um, this is again, as we talked about, about doses, approximately what, what happened if we get like high doses of radiation, we could get bone marrow issue, we could get internal issue like diarrhea, we could get neurological issues that are, as you can see, like very uh, high. And um, there is a percentage of well, death is quite negative, but uh, you can see really what could happen, how fast it could happen if the radiation is very strong, which again could be in a deep space, could be in a very long astronauts flights, could be also in nuclear catastrophes. Uh, what influences the impact of radiation is mostly time. So um, how long will the person be in the radiation environment? And how is the dose, of course, of radiation? The distance. So um, when we are talking about space, the source of radiation could be different. Could be sun, could be other planets, could be the space itself. But so that's like, you are already in there, you don't have such distance. But uh, when we are talking about, for example, some nuclear catastrophes, you might know that people who were in the center are more influenced by radiation and has worse outcome for health as people who are distant somewhere in some, you know, um, distance from the exactly the source of the radiation. Uh, shielding, if there is shielding or if there is no shielding, if we have no shielding and there is radiation even happening or we would fly to space and we, we wouldn't have any protective measures. So uh, we get more more radiation impact that if we are protected by something. As I at the beginning mentioned, for example, sunscreen, sunblock for our, our skin, that's shielding. If we have no sunscreen, we get more sunburn. So that's the shielding principle. Uh, you can see here that this is the radiation source. And from there goes radiation to all of the you know, parts. And we have here some sort of a shielding 
shielding that's like one layer and it blocks like maybe half of the radiation now we have two blocks of let's say it's concrete maybe or something and so it blocks much better you can see that shielding more shielding the better protection before radiation um which factors now are uh involved in this process so the type of radiation is one huge factor right so how much energy this radiation has if it's alpha beta or gamma how much energy it can transfer transmit uh, so the type of radiation is one huge factor that influences health effect from the exposure then size of dose received the higher the dose, of course, the higher of the damage. The rate of the dose, so again, more, um, bigger rate, um, bigger damage. And also like if the if this dosage occurs over a period of time or it's um, in the moment, big dose, okay? So the rate is important. Uh, part of the body that's exposed so again, it's, this is, has to do also with shielding, right? If you are somewhere where, let's say, something explodes, if you are exposed by your back, by your, I don't know, face or something. So um, such body organs that are closer could be, of course, damaged more. Um, the age of everyone, um, more sensitive persons, are um, children, of course. Uh, interestingly, when a person is older, uh, it's less prone to radiation damage uh, because again, that's the burgundy trivandu rule that I was talking about. In uh, older people, uh, cell division is not so quick. Everything slows down for them. So the cells are not dividing as quickly and therefore the radiation doesn't impact the person so much as young, healthy adult. And our personal biological differences, okay? So if we are male, female, if we are, you know, more, a uh, bit better immune system or worse immune system, um, many factors of biological differences can also have um, can also influence this outcome. Um, there are three major uh, syndromes that we are talking about when uh, there's radiation happening, either external or internal. So either if we are attacked from outside or if we maybe breathe or eat something uh, irradiated. Um, one first one is hematopoietic. Uh, it happens around up to one gray radiation and it had Latin period, uh, which like almost no symptoms or weak symptoms for first month. And then it starts to develop really badly. Uh, the second one is with up to eight grays of radiation. If someone gets such radiation in a short period of time, you have gastrointestinal gastro Intestinal, oh my goodness, <laughs> gastrointestinal um, sim, uh, syndrome, um, and that shows Latin sim, uh, latency or Latin period up to seven days, and then um, it quite quickly progresses in a really higher dose of radiation, and then more than eight grades, which is really very very strong, is a nervous system attack. So central nervous system syndrome or damage happening. Um, there's really very short progress quickly start and in a couple of days, it could lead to a patient's death. This uh, happened, for example, in the cases of nuclear catastrophes. As uh, you might heard of, I put one of those because they were several, but the worst of them was uh, Chernobyl, which happened over 30 years ago. And um, back then, 
the explosion that uh, happened in the reactor uh, releases 100 million of curies. That's like a really, really a lot of radiation. And that's why it was spread, as you can see on the picture, almost like all over the Europe, I would say. And of course, as now you already know about the distance and shielding. So people who were in the center and so close to the source were much more impacted than people who were um, further away. And the contamination of ionizing radiation that were happening um, like was most damaging in the center. So um, more than 30 people who were exactly on the site died immediately. That's, um, that's when the uh, symptom of central nervous system damage and the uh, hematopoietic and gastrointestinal happened all of the same because the radiation was just too high to uh, survive. And in Cosmos, um, the radiation is worsening or <laughs> more damaging as we move with the altitude above the Earth. So um, magnetic field, when we are leaving the Earth, uh, is weaker and weaker. And so there is less protection against ionization. And that's when the ionization and the damage from it happens. And the space craft, the astronauts go through the radiation belts of the Earth that you saw in the picture. And so um, the radiation is already on and the astronauts are already in the radiation damage. Um, solar cycle of the sun also influences a lot of that. And um, because the sun has um, cycles that goes into, and um, during those cycles, there are a high intensity of solar flares. And um, that's when the radiation is produ produced from the sun. Um, and as we mentioned, the individual susceptibility is also a factor in cosmos, not only uh, in the Earth. A radiation syndrome that we mentioned that's, that's happening um, either when there is a really big explosion or also could be in a space um, is either acute, so when really a blowout happens, damage, um, and you can see our three uh, syndromes that are happening and they present themselves as uh, anemia, this hematopoietic, so the blood gets uh, infected, bleeding. Um, there are often skin wounds that are bleeding and doesn't heal. Uh, what's considered gastrointestinal, it's uh, people get really sick, uh, they are vomiting, they have many pain. And neurovascular is the cardiovascular, so our heart is in, always in you know, work with our brain is uh, like a system, heart and brain. So when we get attacked from one, then the other also get kind of sick, you know? So the cardiovascular and central nervous system gets uh, the attack from the radiation and it manifests as headaches, dizziness. Um, people don't remember, they don't know where, where they are and so on and so forth. And the chronic radiation is not like that happened now right and there, but it's over time, over years and years or, or months of uh, chronic exposure. It starts with uh, skin burns, but it could also progress to cancer. Um, and the stages are mostly like it started slow, starts slow, but then goes to Latin period where like we don't even know that there could be some harm or damage, but then the illness starts to manifest over time. And if it's really bad, then um, it could lead to death. And if, if not, and the body can um, sort of handle it with the immunity system, with many mechanisms that we scientists don't even know that are happening in a cell, because this area is not so well researched, 
uh, actually the person can also recover. Uh, so for astronauts that are already in the space, uh, why, what's all happening besides the radiation? Why is it so also stressful for, for the person? And that's because of the environment. There is microgravity. So, you know, you all, we all see those pictures and videos where the astronauts fly somewhere in, you know, in the, in the air, in the spaceship, because there is no gravity. So they are weightless. And it seems to be fun, but it's not so much fun because um, for body, this is a huge lot of stress. So first, um, you can imagine here an astronaut. And so for a person, it's not normal to fly somewhere all the time. We need gravitation. We need to be earthed, okay, into the earth. So a body fluid shift above because nothing really stabilizes us. Muscles are not working out because we don't have to walk, we are flying there. So that's not, not natural for our muscles and also for our bones because our bones to be healthy and to produce bone cells, uh, we need to move, we need to walk with muscles, of course. Uh, heart is affected, this also is connection with body fluid shift. The heart is in a different position many organs are in different position than normally because everything is like up upstairs okay and this is very very difficult for a human body to handle um, many astronauts have water retention many other things so um, also well the radiation is the factor that we talked about but also the isolation and stress they are far away they are not only like in different city but they are actually away from the planet. So there's no circadian rhythm. They don't sleep normally. And when you don't sleep, maybe if you sometimes don't sleep well or you sleep less than you need, you know that it's not very pleasant. And if they are in the situation like all of the time, it's really, it could have some psychological effects on them. So now you can see how the fluid shift, you know, muscles move and fluids move up and um, on the earth the gravity would be like pulling it all down but in space there is no gravity so heart chest um, all of the fluids and all of the organs that are uh, inside the body they are moving up and also brain actually it's uh, it's moving up a little bit and uh, how it manifests then uh, astronauts can have muscle atrophy. That's why have, they also have to work out a lot before they start the trip. And also after they need to get some physical therapy because their muscles um, lose their strength. Bone loss, um, blood pressure problems is also connected with the body fluids that are shifting cardiovascular immunity changes skin changes they are not in like the normal air you know microflora uh, changes our like their bellies are also out of normal situation because they don't have normal food up there so they could have digestive problems they could have motion sickness as uh, many people have um, even in the earth when traveling you can have motion sickness and imagine what's the situation like in space uh, water retention. Uh, if you ever saw a picture of astronaut in cosmos and their faces are suddenly puffed because the water is upside in their faces. Um, and brain, the activity of ne uh, neurons are changed. Uh, so uh, all of that's happening in the cosmic environment. Uh, what it exactly does to our brains is that neurogenesis decreases. So neurogenesis is a process of creating new neural cells, new neurons. Um, this decreases. Um, some neural, no, neuronal damage and death of uh, neurons is happening already. Um, morphology of the neurons is altered. So 
we can see when we do like test and we can see staining and, and uh, we could look into the cell. Um, the shape is different, for example, the color is different. So the morphology is, is different. Connectivity, connection between two neurons is reduced. Um, the pressure inside our head is bigger. So the brain, you know, is under pressure, literally. Um, oxidative stress is happening. Uh, many cognitive behavioral disturbances. So that's also the memory disturbance, memory damages, and also the behavior. So more stress, more anxiety that's been producing by the brain, basically. And also the like the worst types, tumors, atoms of the brain, and neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer, Parkinson's, you know, Huntington's disease, and so on, ischemia. Um, or also the aging of the brain that's premature. And now uh, you finally can see the pictures of the brain that I mentioned. This is from one uh, research that had been made in 2017. And there uh, they studied actual astronauts that came from the uh, space mission. And these researchers made um, scans of their brains and you can see here that there are many areas that um, are changed in structure or also in activity. So really, you can see that radiation changes astronauts' brain uh, after the space uh, travel and, and spaceship uh, trip. Uh, currently, uh, as I mentioned, many institute, institutions and institutes are working uh, in the space research. Um, Russia, of course, is one of the countries that participate in the space research. Um, and the experiments that has been done already uh, back in history, uh, you might know, uh, they are famous, they are called BIONS. Um, they are, bions experiments are experiments with living organisms. And it started with, um, for example, let me see here, we had uh, insects in space, bacteria in space, plants in space, rats, monkeys, of course, famous, yeah? You might have heard also about um, like your snails, microorganism, and so on and so forth. Actually, fish, I didn't, uh, I didn't know back then, but well. Uh, and why they were sending at first, um, for example, plants and also then later animals, uh, researchers wanted to first make sure um, how, the hum uh, how the organism of some sort can survive in space. And then if it can live in space for some time, if it can, uh, for plants, for example, they are still testing it because uh, plants and uh, other things as eggs or meat is very important for nutrition for the astronauts. And since they cannot bring every, everything, they cannot bring food with themselves, it would be really useful to uh, grow plants or you know, um, have some chickens or some sort of meat in the space. But uh, it was important to really study if it works like that, if all of those types of organisms sur can survive in uh, space. Uh, uh, and so the last bion was in 2000, 2013, and I know that there should be one more planned. Um, I can see here mice in the space that were flying in the biome. Um, but what's now very, very popular topic is Mars missions, of course. They started in the 1960s and you can see here like a map of Mars and all of the landings that were made until now. There are many uh, successes, of course, but there are also many unsuccessful attempts to land Mars. And um, they will be also in the future many, many others. 
I'm sure, but for people, it's still impossible to go and land to Mars because of all of those things that we already mentioned today. So how could we protect our astronauts from radiation? How could we make sure that uh, they can safely travel to deep space and maybe even to Mars? Well, for sure, we have to have some therapies, protective therapies, but also therapies that could, or treatments that could help afterwards. If uh, an astronaut comes back and he has some health problems, we need something that helps to repair their cells and genes and that they could be really fine even after the trip. We need to have, first of all, also shieldings that uh, would made it easier for the treatment and therapy afterwards because if we could have good shielding we theoretically wouldn't need any treatment and therapy because the shielding would protect the astronaut. Uh, radio protectors, there are many many uh, things that we still are testing. They are uh, either some sort of agents or some sort of natural products, antioxidants, that could really help um, for cells to repair or to be more strong and more um, like forceful against radiation. Uh, pharmacology strategies with more like medicament treatments, um, that's also in development and a dosimetry that you know, radiation part of part of radiation of course dosimetry and also that's why why of all of those strategies we need further research so we can understand fully what's happening how it is happening and how also human body works so we can um, do all that's possible to protect and repair if necessary um, and now we are coming close to the end of our lecture and this if you will be interesting then in your free time you can take a look at more information about our research at the joint institute of nuclear research and also maybe if you want to do some um, summer school or something here and you can you want to learn something more from radiation, from physics, from many other departments of our institute, you can go to University Center and take a look at also their websites. Maybe you will find something interesting for you. And with that, I thank you that you stayed with me um, so long. And I hope that you remembered something and uh, that it was interesting for you. This has been uh, really great. Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, and there were a couple of comments that that came through, uh, thanking you for how well it uh, how well it was and how clear it is. Uh, even one or two direct ones that came from teachers uh, who are in the the audience. So um, I, I know a lot of the participants participants have really uh, really liked it a lot. Um, Seeing as it's a little bit late, maybe I'll, I'll propose that we have a really short question time and we limit it to maybe only five minutes or so. Uh, do, does that sound okay to you, Maria? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, we can have some questions. Okay, perfect. Uh, and there were a couple in the chat. If you have other questions, feel free to add them into the chat as well. Don't feel bad if we don't get to them all because we might not get to them all. And I'll try and group them together to uh, keep the time short. Uh, there was one from Tomash uh, about in space, there's a disease that apparently affects uh, eye nerves uh, that degenerate mm -hmm. and it affects only males, but not for females. Um, is that something you know anything about to, to talk about, Maria? Well, that's interesting, actually. Um, well, as I mentioned, what radiation does, um, there was not very focused on that, but I mentioned uh, very shortly that cataracts can happen, for example, or the inflammation of the eye nerve. And actually, eye nerve is um, a part of our brain because it's connected to the brain. And it's the only nerve that we can see, doctors can see, of course, uh, with just our eyes 
through the light. So yes, eye and eye nerves get damaged by radiation very much. Um, how is that connected with males or females? Might be something specific that I don't really know some disease. I'm not really specialist in like eye research, but um, it could be because of course, um, sex of a person or animal or anything really influences uh, many researches. That's why actually researchers um, either use uh, males or females, uh, such as mice or rats. We also use, for some experiments, we use my, mice female type and for some experiments, we use uh, male uh, mice. So um, this is definitely a factor, but I'm not sure which exact um, disease are you mentioning or you know about, but it can be possible, yes. Excellent, thank you. Uh, and there's a couple of questions that were asked a while ago and that I'd uh, mentioned in the chat that I'd saved them for the end. Uh, there were ones about the radiation on the Earth. Hussein was asking how much radiation reaches the Earth. And related to that, Julia had asked, does that, um, I think it was in relation to a diagram showing radiation being um, uh, coming around the Earth. Uh, and it, asking, does that mean that there's more radiation at the North Pole and South Pole? Like, so would it be dangerous for people living closer to the poles? Uh... Well, so about the radiation on the earth, you can go back um, then if you have this lecture available, which I'm sure you will. Um, there I had some tables, which exactly were saying how much grays or seabirds uh, were present on the earth or when you are flying somewhere, or there's, there were some numbers that maybe I, I think you are referring to. Um, and uh, if there's bigger radiation on the poles, um, I don't want, I, I'm not very, very, very sure, but I think yes, but um, that I maybe lack some uh, knowledge from geo um, radiation um, um, section of the science because uh, there are actually geophysics that uh, are measure, measuring also like how big is radiation where and there should be bigger but I'm not sure like how big or um, if it means that people there would be like really sick of the radiation that I haven't been focusing on but there, for sure there must be a bigger radiation there. And, and and that confirms what I, I think I know already. Um, like, so I'll, I'll back you up on that, but I, I as well, not an expert in that, so I, I can't say for sure. But yeah, I, I do think that there is stronger levels of radiation by the poles, but how much stronger, we don't know for sure. Uh, and Hussein says he uh, wants to ask a question and that might end up being the last question. So Hussein, I think you wanted to turn on your mic. Go ahead and uh, do so and ask your question. Uh, yes, uh, I'll ask that. Uh, can I learn uh, something about uh, the Asian in Russian week? Uh, can you learn something about what in Russian? About radiation in Russian language. About radiation and Russian language. Oh, uh, yes, sure. Actually, we have many uh, lectures in Russian, but since this class is international or more French speaking, we decided to do a lecture in English, but uh, we can do also lecture in Russian or you can find some resources for sure also in Russian. There is uh, like much, much more here of Russian in radiation research here than in English because we are mostly Russian speaking. So, and, and should, sure. should, should, should I put a link to the uh, university center in the chat? Uh, or if there are any links you'd like me to send out to the participants afterwards, I'm happy well, to, uh, to send actually those out as well. On the, on the slide, that's where like, 
uh, one before last, there are many links for either the institute or the university center. So if you click either on the institute website or there is Facebook, there is, um, I think also Instagram. Well, actually there are social networks, generally speaking and uh, also website for university center, which might be more already like professional spe specialized, not such like, uh, younger age as you are, but, um, but they have many classes also either online or um, we used to have here uh, school trips from different countries. But since now is the COVID situation, uh, it might be online. But I'm sure you can find online many things. Um, if, if you want to, you can put it in the chat, Michael, or or you can go back and in the lecture, you will find at the end links for uh, either the website of the Institute or the website of the University Center of Dubna. And and I'll, uh, I'm just looking up the, a good link for the University Center to put in the chat. Um, so I'll um, add that now. Um, and also when, yeah. I, uh, when I publish the video, the talk, then I'll have a couple of lectures. There's ones that um, uh, Olga sent me before. So I'll make sure those are all available for anyone wanting to check out uh, more of your stuff because there there is a lot of great stuff coming out of the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research. It's worth checking out. Um, and I I think I said we'd finish up uh, with with that question. Um, so I want to thank first of all everyone who attended. Thank you again. Uh, there were people from if I counted right from eleven different countries. Uh, feel free to mention your country if I don't get it in this list, but according to how you registered, there were people from France, Turkey, Slovakia, USA, Jordan, Portugal, Azerbaijan, Bulgaria, UK, Ireland, and Switzerland. Um, as you'll notice, I don't formally take attendance. So if I got any of that wrong, then feel free to correct me on that. Uh, but it's quite a spread for having less than 30 people to have quite a spread. So thank you for taking the time to do this. But especially a big thank you to Maria for this wonderful talk. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, positive comments coming through in the chat. I know that the people uh, loved it. Uh, so thank you again. It's really been great. Uh, thank you very have much. Have a great thank evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been nice to be here with you. Have a nice evening.